Welcome to the Politics Watch. This is Ed. Today I'm going to be talking about the ongoing sentencing back and forth surrounding the youth Russian Barnett. He's currently uh, waiting for your work to him after he pleaded guilty to killing five people in Clarendon, a mother and her children. Them. Today, I'm going to talk about the case and some things where stand out to me because I learned something new about this case. It turns out this is unprecedented for Jamaica. But for me going further, we have a Patreon birthday shout out. And this one is going out to Antonio coming straight from your dad, Kenroy. Now today Antonio turned 20 years old. No longer a teenager. So Antonio, if I don't know say I'm proud of you so far and I've nothing but love for you and I'm hoping you continue right for what the right part. Let me say Time and time again, I love it when time I see the father sending them type of things there regarding them son by talking about them, saying them proud and love them. So Antonio, big up yourself. We can move into the video. Russian Barnet. The DPP is currently making recommendations as to the time where she is saying at the minimum in do these crimes. She's suggesting 60 years minimum. Originally, she was asking for the death penalty, but because he pleaded guilty, based on how the law is set up, they must have downgraded from the death penalty. That is not a choice of the DPP. But to make that clear, when you understand the DPP don't write laws, right? they can only carry out what is on the books. So, because they plead guilty, they can no longer be any kind of death penalty. So she has a 60 years before parole. And in case you don't know, the current DPP is Paula Llewellyn. Now, she mentioned something which is news to me. It turns out this current case is the first time anybody has been brought before the courts for killing five people in the same location at the same time. Never in Jamaican history has somebody ever had been brought before the courts. We're not saying it's never ever been done. There's been cases where you have a gang who do it, or two, three, eighty-seven to do it, but this is one man killing five people at the same time. But now make the DPP describe the injuries them where this would inflict on this mother and her children them. Just in case I don't forget, I want to hear it. Right, straight from DPP, Paula Llewellyn. Check this out. Kamisha Wright suffered 48 incised wounds, all in the region of her neck, chest, and limbs. Keshawn Henry received 11 incised wounds, inclusive of an incised wound to the neck, which has been described as a cutthroat injury. And that is Keshawn Henry, the 23 month old toddler. Kiman the Smith. 15 years old, suffered nine incised wounds and four stab wounds. Shara Lee Smith, 11 years old, suffered 22 incised wounds and two scratches. Rafaela Smith, five years old, suffered five incised wounds and a gaping wound to the upper anterior neck. In this case, these were even younger children apart from the 15 year old and they owned the same that according to him they sought to arm themselves with was a bottle of baby oil or baby lotion to throw at him whilst he, as if he was some sort of samurai armed with a knife, was intent on carving up all these innocent people. In the frantic attempt to try and help their mother and their siblings, one of the people in the jar, they have baby oil. And this is coming from Russian Barney. He was up against he, he was up against a child holding a bottle of baby oil. That should give an idea of those children's final moments. When somebody is so desperate to live and to protect their siblings, their mother, that them reach for a bottle of baby oil to use it as a weapon, you know. They were faced with total desperation. A bottle of baby oil. You heard the injuries? 
We're not talking about no one stab. People get heated and smelly chuck, smelly and smelly chew and one stab and run gone. Repeated over and over. You heard the saying, a drowning man clutch at a straw. That whole saying is about desperation. Desperate times call for desperate measures. When people are fighting to live, they will reach for anything. A child reach for a bottle of baby oil in their final moments. Of course, Jamaica did not kill these children. Of course, as a collective, we did not kill those children. But we have to understand that as a society, we failed. We failed that woman and our children. Because when people do things like this, there is no clear example set so that's the next man who even think about this right, have a long hard word with himself before he even attempt it. You see what the woke tips tell is that we feel we're shame born him because him did want this and him did want to do that and if only him did get this so we need to understand that we don't have to understand nothing. So the DPP has said 60 years with all things considered the guilty verdict right, the time already spent 60 years. The defense of Russia and Barnett, I say, him to get a little more time off, right? a bigger reduction because him never waste the course time. To be frank, I don't care how far time he want to waste. The man is supposed to get all about 10 15 years off because he didn't waste the court time. A justice system is not built around being nice to somebody because they didn't waste their time. Oh well, him no, him, it make things easier for we never have to go through the paperwork and trial so we could just take off on 10, 15, 20 years. Are certain things that work? I don't know, I'm no expert. My business do one waste time. Man's supposed to get a sentence that befits the crime. And this right as well is arguably one of the most barbaric acts Jamaica has ever seen. The DPP say it's unprecedented. Some of them know what waste court time have to do with nothing. That should not be a factor in my opinion. And even that 60 years is fairly generous if you're thinking about it. Right. Five people, what at 12 years each. The fact that I'm even go lower than that. It's amazing that this is even a conversation. This is a debate, but we have to go see what the judge do. Now what this case shows you is that when an activist tell us that, oh, this needs to be in place before we say this, I lied in my tell. Right. Them tell us, oh, no man, we are serious when it comes down to crime and you know acts of brutality. It's just that we want to say this first. That them say, right? But this case, give them everything they want. Them say, well, the reason why we don't support this is because all we know is how him do it. Well, guess what? Rushing Barnett confessed. Them stance not change. Them say, well, um, the case need to be an extreme case right, of savagery. Well, can it get any more extreme than this? A mother and her four children them, one of the people them was literally a baby. Has their stance changed? No, it hasn't. And their stance will not change. The idea is that, oh, we object to this because we want to see this. It's unicorn meat. So, when we keep a try a peas, walk to this. When we keep a try a peas, right, these various groups, and say, so, well, all right, does this meet the standard? Does this meet the standard? Nothing will ever meet the standard for them. And if we rely on them, right, we're going to have a society where people think, say, things like this can happen, and then they can go in front of a judge and tell man, say, well, hey, look on the bright side. I confess I didn't waste your time. Precedent is a hell of a thing, you know. People are watching. It's not just people who are outraged right, over what happened. To that family but also other criminals they are watching oh well if him can do that and only get this then me now do nothing so extreme so me can then they are watching you see sooner or later jamaica is going to have to grow some cojones right and realize that we are on our own and we cannot rely on any activists right especially foreign activists we lay down some kind of plan that's going to work for us. Right. Our policies must be tailor-made for us and our situation and our cultures and the type of killers we deal with. 
Look on enough of the country that I used to preach to Jamaica for years. Many of the countries in North America, Europe, right now, they must struggle with for them own crime problem. Look at countries like Sweden. A bastion of folk division. Used to brag about, oh, we took a different approach. We don't sentence people to no, to no long sentence. We, we, we feel that the best way is to... Now they're reversing their policies. Now the same walk Sweden I say, right? Tougher laws. Now they must say, all right, we're going to increase this, increase this. One time, if you were underage, it was automatic saying I'll go jail, then take out that. Where are these policies coming from? Why are they changing them route? Oh, because now them see things serious on them. It was easy for them to preach to Jamaica when time things did nice and sweet. But now things are not so sweet on the streets of Stockholm. So guess what the Swedish government and the Swedish people are doing? Taking the steps necessary to protect their own interests. Did they consult with Jamaica? Did you see anybody in Sweden consult with Jamaica? Them said this now work, change it fast. Countries like the UK love to preach to Jamaica about work the prison and what we should and shouldn't do. The UK is having them own crime wave. Knife crime this, knife crime that. All of a sudden, me under pressure, man has said right, change this, bring in this. Did anybody see the UK government consult with Jamaica before they make a decision? Did you see the UK say, excuse me Jamaica, offer your input on this matter? Nobody knows Jamaica none. The same thing goes to Uncle Sam or Canada or wherever. None of these countries, none of the citizens in these countries, don't ask Jamaica or Trinidad or Barbados for their input on matters that concern their country. None of them. But when time Jamaica or Trinidad want something, all of a sudden here come these countries trying to play daddy. Trying to act as your guide and lead. And nobody now asks him for no advice. American issues are dealt with exclusively by Americans. British issues are dealt with exclusively by the British. Swedish issues are dealt with exclusively by the Swedish. But when time a Jamaican issues we get dealt with, all of a sudden we start here where this group say and that group say, and we start here about where the French say and the British say, and nobody now asks him nothing. Jamaica is stopping the entire region for murdering. Jamaica. Little Little Jamaica is top two, top three right, for murder rate in the whole world. Right, the whole world. Almost 200 countries in the world and Jamaica at the top of the charts. And when time is time for me to make bold decisions, all of a sudden, right, people who can't even relate to our crisis I try to tell you what to do. Right, with the help of their agents on the ground in the Iron Man. No Jamaican can go nowhere in a Sweden go tell Swedish people nothing. Or Swedish matters. Likewise the UK, likewise France, but here they come. And Jamaica can just accept this. This was Shane Barney sentencing is important because this is going to set a precedent. This is going to make it clear what Jamaica stand or don't stand for. And the days after us hiding behind, well those are the laws, will not cut it anymore. Because we know the laws can change and we see laws change. Fast, fast. When time has something with him care about. The DPP made a strong case, but we have to see what the judge does. And before the video end more after this, as I was listening to the DPP speak, it reminded me right, what she's capable of. A lot of people right, don't like Paula Llewellyn. I think some of the criticism she gets is unfair, some of it is fair. Now for the things that she gets criticized for is outer and them. She does not write laws. She deal with the laws them in front of her. But whatever you think about Paula Llewellyn, it is clear that when she's actually in the courtroom, that's where she shines the brightest. Some of the ones that may come to mind, the Charmin Ratch and Joe Plinch case, right, or the Coswell case. So I was thinking Paula Llewellyn would play a lead role in the Klansman trial. She'd be the prosecutor who is actually in there, and especially considering she was to be leaving the post, I thought she'd be going out, you know. And the last bro. As I said, I don't know the nitty gritty what prevented that from happening, but I'm just telling you what I would have liked to see. Anyway, Peter and Squad, you open yourself. PIA, you don't know more life. Watch your squad, stay circling. Bless.